video, I'm gonna walk you through how to use PaperPal to have AI generate a cover letter for you when you're trying to submit a research article. And then we're going to edit through that cover letter and kind of make it make sense for what I would actually probably submit to a journal with my research article. Now, I'm just gonna start with an untitled document. This is PaperPal, and I will have a link below both to PaperPal and to um, researcher.life. I will also have a discount below to researcher.life. It's a membership that includes a lot of different tools within it that also includes PaperPal within it. So I'm going to click on this untitled document. This is just an empty document here. And I'm going to go to the Copilot here, and that's where we can create a cover letter. So if I come into Copilot, I'm gonna to go to Generate. And then if we go to email the journal, we can write a cover letter. And that's where, if you don't know, if you haven't submitted a research article, um, you tend to submit a cover letter to the editor that you're submitting your research article to. And what that does is basically tells the editor what your paper is about, why they should consider publishing it in their journal. Um, and sometimes they even ask for you to give the um, some suggested references within the um, cover letter as well. So that's what we're going to do is write a cover letter. And if you are working on your research article, make sure you download my scientific research paper checklist. It walks through everything you need to successfully submit your research article to a journal, including how to write your research article. And that link will be in the description below. So I'm gonna click on write a cover letter. And so it's going to ask me several questions. And some of this I'm going to kind of just fill in information, um, not necessarily accurate. So it's gonna ask what the editor in chief is. This is because this is who you generally address it to. So I'm just gonna say it's Jane Smith, the manuscript title. Actually, I'm just gonna look up my manuscript and copy it in. I'm in here and then I can just copy this in. So I'm just gonna do my first published paper. I wanna see how well it does. So then the journal that I submitted it to was Journal for the American Society of Mass Spectrometry. And then the author details, and I was a graduate student at the time. And then the details. So this is details help AI generate a better result. Briefly decide the study aims, methods, findings, and any conflicts of interest. So I'm literally just gonna copy and paste my abstract in. And I don't really have any conflicts of interest here, so I'm just gonna do that and I'm gonna ask it to generate. Okay, so what this did is it re-gave me my form details here. And I'm not exactly sure why it did that. I find that a little odd for it to do that, but the actual, data is here. So I'm going to copy this and insert it over here. Um, so this is an incredibly short cover letter. Um, this is an incredibly short cover letter. I'm actually going to ask it to regenerate. Let me see if it regenerates a longer cover letter. Okay, this looks like it's generating much better. Okay, we're going to redo that. Okay, let's insert this. There we go. This is more what I would expect. Okay, so dear Dr. Jane Smith, this is basically your um, greeting there. I'm writing to submit the attached manuscript titled, yep, for publication. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly the first sentence. You just change out your title and the journal here. The only thing that I might add to this is I might say as a whatever you're actually submitting it as. So certain journals select multiple or um, accept multiple different types of papers. So I might say as a research article, or I would say as a review, as a communication, um, just to clarify how you are submitting it. So then you go into, basically it's like a mini abstract, but it's a mini abstract that appeals to the objectives of that journal. So steroids represent an interesting class of small biomolecules due to their use as biomarkers and their status as scheduled drugs. However, the analysis of steroids is complicated by the potential for many isomers. In this work, we aim to further develop eye mobility spectrometry separation for the analysis of steroids. 
TWIMS was applied to the study of group one metal adducts and their corresponding multimers for five sets of isomers. Our results show that TWIMS was successful in separating steroids as dimeric adducts of group one metals. That's a pretty good. I might have one more sentence on implication. So I wanna make sure they don't do that. So we've not published or presented this work elsewhere in part or in entirety, and it is not under consideration by another journal. I have never included these statements in a, um, in an art or in a cover letter. Um, this may be normal with specific fields, but it's typically not normal in my field of chemistry. I know in biology, a lot of journals will have you submit like a conflict of interest declaration or stuff like that. I don't tend to put this in my cover letters. Um, we hope you will consider this manuscript for publication in journal. Thank you for your time and consideration. Okay, so this is mostly done. I would add in an impact of the study for the journal here. So I would say something to like this um, study illustrated the potential um, use of TWIMS in clinical applications to measure steroid biomarkers, I'm gonna say TWIMS MS, in clinical applications to measure steroid biomarkers, um, which would result in faster analysis times. Something that more clearly states why I'm submitting to the journal that I'm submitting to, but I think that this does give a good overall structure. The other thing is to look at the author guidelines for whatever journal you're submitting to. They will sometimes have a section of telling you what they need in your cover letters. So like sometimes I would also put in here suggested reviewers for this article are, and then I would list out three reviewers. I only do this when the journal asks for it. Sometimes the journal asks you for it within their submission process. So you just add the names there. Sometimes they want it in the cover letter. It's completely up to the journal and how they do it. But overall, this is kind of a simple structure for how um, to build out your cover letter. I think Paper Pal did really good the second time. So if you get that error where the form shows up, maybe regenerate um, to hopefully allow it to show up a little bit better. But I just posted my abstract. So if you're already done with your paper, you already have your abstract, you could use this to just put in your abstract and have it generate, you know, the body of the cover letter for you. Obviously, you'd want to take this and put it on a more formatted um, letter so that you can have like the date and everything up top, your header and everything like that um, already set up for you as well. So I hope this was helpful in having it generate a cover letter for you. If you want to see other things that PaperPal can do, leave me a comment down below. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.